Hey, I'm back to my old boring setup. No more cool, fun light board. Um, we're going to talk a little bit today about, um, if I can find the PowerPoint slides, there we go, the kinetics of radioactive decay. So you've already learned about kinetics in the previous chapter, and this is going to be essentially the same thing, which should be nice, make it a little bit more uh, familiar. And with radioactive decay, what we find is that regardless of the radioactive decay, all radioactive decay follows first order kinetics. So that's going to mean we're going to specifically look at the integrated rate law for first order reactions. And we're going to look at the half-life equation for first order uh, uh, reactions. And that's going to let us uh, or help us make it a lot easier and allow us to determine if um, a radioactive material is around for X amount of time, how much of it should be left, how much should decay, or based on how much is decayed, what is the rate that that occurs at. Um, so unlike, uh, although chemical reactions, with the nuclear reactions where we know they're actually going to change which element they are and what um, what the makeup of the nucleus is, they're not quite the same as chemical reactions. They're not going to be affected by temperature or um, other things like that. We're not really worried. We don't have to have those molecules come in and collide with each other. It's already there in the nucleus that that thing is going to occur, is going to happen, that decay. Um, so. There's our half-life equation. And like first order uh, reaction kinetics, it's independent of concentration. So we don't have to worry about that changing over time or changing depending on how much of that material we have. And again, that's straight out of chapter 15. Go and look at the half-life equation for um, um, first order reactions. And the only thing we're really concerned with here then is that K, that rate constant. Um, so the greater that is, the shorter the half-life should be, the greater the rate constant, of course, the faster that decay is going to occur. Um, some examples of different materials, and because of that, they're all different. They're going to undergo different types of decay. It's going to occur sometimes very rapidly, sometimes not so much. And you can see that. Sometimes we have radioactive materials that are very unstable. They'll have a half-life in the order of seconds or less than that, milliseconds, microseconds. Sometimes um, minutes. We, these don't, of course, list obviously all of the different radioactive materials. Some may be minutes, hours, others years, sometimes millions or billions of years. Um, and we'll find in a little bit that depending on that half-life actually is going to sort of dictate the types of things we can da uh, date. Can we get a date on something um, that may only be a few thousand years old or if we're going to date something that might be millions of years old, what radioactive isotope are we going to be looking at there? So here's our half-life. Again, it's the amount of time that it takes for us to get to half of that original material, that starting material at this point. So here we're looking at radon 220. Here your half-life is one minute. So if we started with a million atoms of radon, then at one minute, we should have 500,000. Another half-life, so add a minute onto that, two minutes, should be 250,000, and so on and so forth. So um, if it happens to fall in that nice, one half, one quarter, one eighth window, you can tell how many half-lives it's went through and exactly how long that decay has occurred. If it's not quite so cut and dry, if we have, you know, 22% of the material remaining or six and a half percent remaining or whatever, you're going to need to go into those integrated rate laws to see how, um, how old that material is or for how long has it been decaying. The other thing, of course, you'll notice is this starts to approach zero after about six or seven half-lives. So, um, depending on how sensitive our instruments are, we can uh, usually only determine the date of something or observe it or even notice that any of that radioactive material is present after, like it shows here, maybe seven, eight, at most nine half-lives. After that, so this radon 220, um, after nine minutes, there really isn't a detectable amount left anymore. Or even if we can detect it, we're probably not going to be able to say, um, yeah, this sample is exactly nine and a half minutes old or 12 minutes old or whatever it happens to be. Um, so consider the graph representing the decay of a radioactive nuclide. What is the half-life of the nuclide? So here we are at 100% and we want to go, it looks like that is 50%. So what is our time here? It looks like it's double this number, uh, 625. And so this should be what, 1250 and then 1875 and so on and so forth. So I'm saying, yep, 1250, the amount of time here 
to get to half of that. And half again should be 2,500 right there. So like I said, radioactive decay is a first order process. This is really just that integrated rate law, the first order integrated rate law rewritten in a slightly different form, um, makes it easier to work with these. You can, if you know the rate constant and you know the isotope ratio, of course, N sub zero would be 100% of your starting isotope and N sub T would be at some time. So at that point we might have, you know, half as much, a third as much, whatever. So you'll get a specific ratio here between, you know, one half and one or, or whatever it happens to be. Take the natural log of that. And if you know the rate constant, you can find the time. Or if you know the time and the, the, the isotope ratio, you can find the rate constant. Or if you know the rate constant and the time, you can find out how much of that material is left over at the end. In the next video, we'll do a couple sample problems with these um, so you can see them in practice. But um, this is a nice form of the equation to use and it, it really gets cut and dry into exactly um, what variable it is you're looking for. So a sample initially contains 1.6 moles of a radioactive isotope. How much of the sample remains after four half-lives? Well, after one half-life, we should have half of this, 0.8. One more half-life, we should have half of that, which would be 0.4, and then 0.2, and then 0.1. So there we see that right there. Um, yeah, and that's concentration based, and we don't know the rate constant, so that we couldn't use the equation. So this is just really a basic kind of mathematics problem here. Um, so I'm going to stop right here, and then we're going to talk a little bit about dating in the next video, and then I'll do some sample problems, like I said, using the, the half-life equation and the integrated rate law equation. So we'll stop right here, um, keep the video short and sweet, and again, hopefully uh, to the five people still watching these, this is helpful.